John, it's a pleasure. Good to have you with us here. And I was reminiscing, you know, today is the anniversary of the fire at Old Turner, at, uh, at Old uh, uh, Fulton County, when he hit the uh, big home run to beat the Cardinals on the first day that he became a Brave. A steal, a brink job from Randy Smith. There's the fire in the press box at Fulton County. Then they beat the Cardinals with that walk off down 5 nothing. You remember well. What an induction from McGriff. Let's discuss that first. Go ahead. Yeah, we were sitting in the outfield, sitting in the infield. Couldn't believe what we were watching. We didn't think there was a chance we were going to play. And then, of course, you mentioned that Freddie had such an impact on our season. Uh, he was the ultimate, you know, in no matter what team he would have been on, he would have batted in the same order. That, to me, is the greatest, a, you know, greatest, greatest compliment I could give Freddie McGriff because he was so – he was the same everywhere he went. And that, that season, I mean – you know, there was play on words. You can imagine Braves catch fire, uh, I think, was one of the headlines in the, in the paper. But what a teammate, what a player, and so deserving. Don't know why he kind of slipped through the first time that he was, you know, on the 10-year ballot. But I'm glad to see he's uh, finally gotten his just due. 51 and 17, Atlanta went in 93, the last great pennant race in the sport. 50, because it was before the wild card. 51 and 17, the day of this fire and Fred's first game there, uh, the Giants led by nine games. They were 30 over 500. The Braves were 54 and 41. And the Braves go 51 and 17. And McGriff, a big factor there. When the Atlanta team made that, when Scherholz made that trade, and they, you gave up nothing. When you made that trade, did you know about the impact Freddie could have? Did you know enough about him, John? Let me get your thoughts there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Facing him, uh, he had such a presence in the box. Unique stance. Never swung and missed. He rarely swung and missed awkwardly, right? Always on balance. Hit the ball to all parts of the field. We knew that our offense was going to have the attention that it deserved at the pitchers facing us. You know what we also knew? We knew we had been there, done that, and that our pitching staff was ready to, to go down the stretch and finish the season. I think there were reports out of San Francisco. Those guys got a little tired. They were pitching in a lot less humid and uh, better conditions. And when they came over to our place and it was hot as you know what, they, they kind of wilted, and I think that's how we caught them. But Freddie was a huge part of that offense. Don't forget, the Braves went into San Francisco, and they swept them in August. Giants came back to Atlanta, and the Braves beat them two out of three, five out of six. And the Braves, of course, killed the Rockies that year, win 13, beating Colorado and won on the last day of the season. How about his steadiness about McGriff before we turn our attention to the sport itself, John? How about the steadiness? I mean, every year you can count him. He's going to hit 290, 30 home runs, and 100 RBIs. I mean, that's just all there is to it on a year-in, year-out basis. It's hard. As you made a great point, he would hit third or whatever place in the lineup for the best teams and the worst teams. That's how steady he was, but rock solid. Discuss that for a sec. Let me hear yeah, everything about him, his um, discipline. He's kind of that guy that lights up the the locker room when he comes in. He's got that unbelievable smile and laugh. And he just went up and all shucks did his game and did it when with consistency. Body never changed. Nothing changed with Fred McGriff. He just was a professional hitter. And he was one of those guys that you wouldn't pick to have average and power be connected to the way that he went about his game. And that's exactly what happened. Everywhere he went, you could pencil him in for those numbers you basically wrote in. And that's why I thought, you know, they slipped through. And for whatever the reason, he didn't get inducted in his timely matter. But I know that they made it right now. And uh, good for him. Yeah, I deserve to. All right, that's number one. Number two, let's look at some ball clubs here. Uh, I get a little sense. First off, let's do the teams that are sort of on the brink of being out of it, not out of it. Scherzer, Verlander, Mets, Soto, San Diego, Otani a little bit with the Angels. You expect these three big franchises to stand pat despite their records in San Diego and the Mets specifically and not do anything at all? Or do you think they would explore making a trade with one of their big guys? What do you, th what do you, Otani, of course, specifically, although I don't think the Angels will trade him. What's your take with that? I think San Diego and the Mets pitching staffs are too good to give up on the season. I think they both had a legitimate chance. One of them is going to make the playoffs, in my opinion. It'd be hard-pressed to have both of them, but it's not out of the realm of possibilities. I think their pitching staff, uh, if they just get any timely hitting at all, I don't understand why the Mets have struggled offensively. I think if they get connected offensively, they're definitely going to make a run to the playoffs. Same thing with San Diego. I just love their pitching staff. 
And I, uh, I just, I, I definitely think that if you're talking about a powerhouse team that we, we thought in the beginning of the season, these were two teams. And so uh, as far as the Angels go, I, I, I just don't know the game plan there. I, I don't know if they're good enough to make the postseason, and I don't know if they're going to be able to re-sign Otani. So it's kind of like they're in neutral. And this latest winning streak probably pauses the uh, trade talk for the Angels. Uh, the Yankees, I, I think you're 100% right. Uh, I don't know if I agree with you about the, about the pods and the Mets. They, I love their pitching, but I, uh, they're a ways back. Uh, how about uh, the Yankees at 50 and 47? You know, you see a lot of them, too. They really can't get anything going at all. They pitch pretty well. We know that bullpen, although some leaks lately, still very good. But their offense is a disaster. They're hitting, John, if you didn't know it, they're hitting 217, I think. I'm sorry, 218 since June 3rd. And they struck out 42 times. And the Angels are not going to have great pitching. And they struck out 42 times in his three-game series in Anaheim. And a lot of their guys, LeMayu, Rizzo, not hitting. What's the cure for them? Well, you know, I, I think they are in trouble. I, I, I picked them to be the, a really tough team in the second half if they could get Aaron Judge back soon. Aaron Judge just makes the whole difference to the lineup, and he makes the pitching to that team a lot more difficult. But without him, you're right, they have become susceptible to the strikeout. And I'm, I'm a little bit surprised they haven't been able to string together with their pitching staff being as good as they can and their bullpen, I thought they'd win with that. Uh, unfortunately, you do have to score a couple runs, and Rondon has not gotten off to a great start. So the Yankees are in a little bit of trouble in a division that is really, really good. Uh, I'm not giving up on them yet, but I don't know the time frame of when Aaron Judge is coming back either. I don't think anybody does. Atlanta, let's throw out the four-game losing streak for a sec, John. I think they are the best team, and I do think they're adapt a little better in the postseason this year with the six-day layoff because they're going to have the best record, which means they won't play for a little while. I think last year that hurt them some, not to mention some injured and fatigued pitchers. I think Atlanta will adjust a little better, and I do think they're still the best team with that unbelievable offense. Give me your thoughts on the Braves. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's good every once in a while to go through some adversity. I mean, it's been such a historic first half. They could use some help at the trade deadline in their bullpen. Um, they're going to add like two free agents or two trades, if you think about it, Max Fried and Kyle Wright, if they get back in the rotation. That's just a, a boost to their starting rotation. And I think their offense is as deep as it gets. They do and will strike out a little bit too much. They've done a good job up until this point cutting that out and their offense in the first inning just starts with Acuna. And when he gets on, of course they score. So there is not a, an easy, like the rest of the season is going to be easy, but they have to finish strong and they have to add a little bit in their bullpen because this has been a year of streaks. This has been the streakiest baseball season I think I've ever seen. And to think you can contribute that to the balanced schedule and some pretty bad teams that when you connect those together, teams can kind of move up the ladder real quick like we saw Cincinnati do. And the Braves, of course, have had a lot of big time winning streaks that have kind of bolstered their year so far. All right, let's go back to McGriff as we end because he deserves all the accolades we can give him. All right, he got there in 93. Uh, you know, you had a great year, lost to the Phillies. 94, the Expos and a strike, so we throw that out. 95, you won it. 96, you should have won it. You had, well, you could have. You're up two on the Yanks. Yeah, probably right there, John, was that window to get a second one. Boy, I'm sure McGriff and yourself would have loved to have one. 93, 96, one of those two years. Thoughts with that? Let me hear. Yeah, we, we, we felt like we were the best team in 93. Now, we lost to the Phillies. Give the Phillies credit. And when we won it in 95, there was no doubt that in 96, when we were two games up, we were going to be repeat champions. And I can promise you this. It would have been impossible for our GM to start making some of those trades he made when we lost that series. We would have been, the, you know, if, coulda, shoulda, the New York Yankees go off to win four out of the next five. There's no saying that we, we couldn't have won four out of five had we won 96. I think the decisions to make all those trades were, were interesting because we lost and we were going in a direction that still put us in the mix, but I don't think we could have been and would have been as dominant had we won 96. We wouldn't have traded some of those guys in my mind. Yeah, interesting. In 93, you were the best team. Maybe the Giants took a little something out of you. Who knows? John, well done. We we'll always chat. Always a pleasure. Thanks for a few minutes here today. Keep it going. My pleasure. Thanks for having me.